right. <laughs> Hi, I'm your host, Oraldo, for It's Tejano Time, and you're listening and watching Tejano Talk. Uh oh. What, what? Oh, wait a second. Okay, this is what happens when I produce my own show by myself. I'm messing up here. Why? Okay. All right. Hold on a second. Okay. There I go. I had another window. <laughs> Everybody's used to this. I'm not a professional. Everybody knows that, you know. Uh, I Nemo's not here right now. He's having technical difficulties. Oh, wait a second. I forgot. See, I'm already nervous. Uh, but uh, before I uh, introduce our guest, I have a special co-host today. And let's see. Come here. Come here, everybody. Hey, this is my daughter, Olivia. Hey, say hi, Olivia. Hello. How you doing? I, uh, okay. I, I guess good. <laughs> you guessed good. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. You can't hear anything, can you? Okay. Uh, no, I can't. All right. So, can you hear this? No. Okay. Here we go. To me, I All right. Know. It's a little awkward, but uh, we're going to introduce our our guests today. What's um, All right. But are you excited about our guest, Olivia? Very. Yes. Okay. And here, whoops. Here, let me do this. All right. Here's our guest. Awesome. Uh, uh, Asada y Grupo Ara Adas, I'm sorry. Adas y Grupo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. They make you delicious. Though. Delicious. Asada. Hi, Olivia. <laughs> hey. Hi, Hello. Hello. All, right. All right. Okay. Uh, Olivia is our special guest today because, I mean, besides our special guest, okay, first time, uh, but uh, she, when she found out that you, we were gonna have somebody from the movie Encanto to singing her one of her favorite songs from that. Uh, what's the name of the song? We don't talk about Bruno. Yes, and she wanted to be say hi, and then she started showing me stuff that she wanted to to talk to you about, maybe. And so I said, okay, okay, we're gonna do. Oh, besides everybody back there, Nemo's having technical difficulty. He might show on a little bit later, but we got Olivia here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, Olivia, mm -hmm. why did, did you? Why do you like the song uh, "We Don't Talk About Bruno"? Um. So there's one special person in my life. She was um one of my favorite teachers. Her name was Mrs. Bruno, and so oh. so she was like. So sh when the movie came out, we were so excited. Every day we played the song at the end of the day. And so instead of saying, we don't talk about Bruno, we said, we don't talk about Mrs. Bruno. Because that was our <laughs> little inside joke in my, in my classroom. So, so that's why I love this song. And her whole class learned the whole song. The whole song. Did do do you want to sing a little bit of it? Uh, I guess so. Okay, just yes, sing. I love to hear you sing it. Right. We don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. We don't talk about Bruno, but it was our wedding day, wedding day. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, cloud in the sky. Bruno walks in with a mischievous grin, thunder. You turn the story on mine and tell me double why Bruno said it looks like rain in a jealous married in a hurricane umbrella. Anyway, we don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. We don't talk about Bruno. Awesome. Woo! That was awesome. <laughs> and then Dolores would go, hey. Bruno live in fear, Bruno stuttering and stumbling. In the wings, you put him muttering and mumbling. I associate him with the sound of fun. It's a happy look with the gifts so humbling. Always at the well and the family fumbling. Ruffling with prophecy, they couldn't understand. They understand. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite parts, too. Aw, yeah. oh, thank you, Olivia. Well, thank you for singing. That was beautiful. And thank you to Miss Bruno. That was awesome. Oh, I, I couldn't imagine being in her class. 
Yeah, I that was shocking because it, when the movie came out, her t teacher was named Miss Bruno, and so that was it. Oh, okay. a little bit shocking. O Olivia wanted to ask one question before she left. Before she leaves. Um, how did you get into the movie? How did you get become? Oh. Yeah. Get how the did part I of things. Um, well, I will say it really quickly. I actually had retired from music, so I've been in the music industry for 20 years, and I worked with Pitbull, the Yankees, Sierra, Missy Elliott. My husband as well has worked with, you know, Sony, Universal, produced for Enrique Iglesias, Paulina Rubio, so many people. And then I told him I wanted to have more kids, and I took a step back. But... Um, I always kept up with music and we would release things here and there. And uh, one day I was at the house, I had just gotten a new phone and I updated my emails and at the top of the email it was uh, an email saying that they would like, someone would like to get a hold of me for an, uh, an opportunity and I replied. And as my own assistant, then my husband calls me and he's like, hey, it's Disney. So they reached out to me, I was able to audition, then I got a call back. And that's after that, that's when I found out I got the part. So, yeah, I was already retired from music and I had taken a step back, but Disney came and knocking and I couldn't say no because it was a dream since I was a little girl. Just like you. Really? Really? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, and there's one more thing that I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you guys. Oh yeah, you wanted to show yeah. her. Um, so in Girl Scouts, I am in Girl Scouts, so. Oh, wow, group, really? We were doing a fashion show. I was doing this randomly, to be honest. And so I didn't realize that I was making a dress sort of like Isabella's. <gasps> that is so cool. Oh, you I, I didn't really know what I was doing, to be honest. <laughs> that is so cool. It looks great. That's one of them. Isabella would be so happy. Peace I want to I kind of want to make clothes when uh, for a hobby when I'm older. Yeah. My mom's going to teach me, brain. so. Please learn all you can, especially if your mom wants to teach you. It's very important to pay as much attention. Be patient because it takes a lot of practice. Make sure you use those little thumb protectors so you don't pinch yourself while you're learning how to do all the good stuff. And you're going to have a great time doing it, especially because mm -hmm. your mom wants to do it with you. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, now say bye to him. Bye. Okay. Bye. bye. She's gonna tell all her friends the, the <laughs> about this. And yeah. she said she at the end of class she's gonna ask her teacher to play the video yeah. for her. Like, <laughs> she's gonna be famous. <laughs> okay. I love you, sweetheart. Okay. Bye, Olivia. Oh, it's bye, not gonna die. Okay. It's not gonna die. I love it. <laughs> she even gave you a plug. Look at that. <laughs> my, <laughs> my daughter is awesome. Okay. We're gonna leave a, a spot for Nemo if he shows up. Oh, nice. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, she's working there for me, guys. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, I love you. Future I love entrepreneur, you. future entrepreneur. I oh, see yeah, it right yeah. now. She's she like, like to... subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget, it's Tejano time. It's always Tejano time. Yeah, I, I, you know, she wants to be a YouTuber. And I go, you got to first get a nine to five before you get become a because <laughs> it does not pay the bills. I like that. Okay. Uh, wow, I'm I'm excited about my daughter. She, she did an awesome job. I'm surprised. She did great. That was yeah. awesome. Okay. You know, I, I'm the guy that does the research and stuff like that. And I have, I, I've been wanting to ask this question because uh, uh, when you were on Lawrence's and Hilda's uh, uh, program on Cubo podcast, which is on Monday nights, everybody needs to watch that. Uh, uh, you all talked about that you're going to start some new, you're going to release music. Yeah, uh, new music like every couple of weeks and stuff like that. And there was a concept mm -hmm. that you all talked about. It says, I think it was Taco Madre. I thought that would be, <laughs> I thought that would be an excellent song like that. So, yeah. Have you worked on a song like that yet? We're, Not we're, yet. we're cooking I, it up. It's still not fully. Uh, we have a okay. beat. We have a beat. Yeah. Right. yeah. No, yeah, and we thought, want to be releasing like every. Uh, like four to eight weeks, we want to be okay. releasing, you know. Music. Yeah, we started with three uh, at once just so everybody could get a hold of that style, kind of. Yeah. And then we're just going to basically get into our rhythm. Yeah. Oh, speak of the devil. Nemo's here. Okay. 
Hey, uh, real quick, can you send that to that email I sent you? Because um, I'm on my phone. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I, I've been on the on the show. What okay, so I'm on my phone, and you can see it's getting really. Close. You know what? It's fine. You could be on the phone. No, I just can't. No, I, if you could just pause for a minute. <laughs> I'm gonna and, pause. And dude. That you could talk amongst yourselves, and uh, if you go <laughs> to that email I, I text you, that that'd be great. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, you yeah, texted me I, an email. Yeah, I texted you a message. On your phone. You know this is live. <laughs> yeah, you know it's live, Nemo. <laughs> you'll, you'll find out this show is very unprofessional, so it fits right. Oh, right. no, 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 no. You feel no, right. we're not. It's all good. So, okay. I'm sorry, guys. Well, okay. while you get it together, I'll, I'll chat about so people can, can hear your technicals. Okay, so the whole idea of Adasa y Los Locos came up because, I, you know, being in the industry so long, my husband has been my incredible supporter but also my producer on so many fronts of our music and videos and i always told him that i really wanted to work on something with us together but he was like really you and me as a band and i was like come on i would love to do something together and then when encanto came we had started working on the stuff um we released some things through chr with hilda and um and i was like you know and rick he's amazing rick garcia from oh, yeah. CHR Records. And then when things blew up with Encanto, we kind of put a pause on it and I was on tour. But then we came back to it and Gabriel was like, okay, I guess I'm open to it. So we kind of kicked around names and Hilda was so cool because she was like, you know, okay, I really think you guys should just go, like, just do the thing. And and we finally came up with one and then Gabriel was like, you know what? I wanted to be Los Locos because I want to invite any of my friends that I want to bring into the mix. And so the first person we invited to be a part of Adas y Los Locos um, Eric. was Eric Jimenez, which was in La Fiebre. And he's an incredible yeah. musician, incredible guitar player, uh, such a talented person. And they've been friends for years. And so it's really cool because we get to work together. We write the songs. Gabriel works on the tracks and he just does an incredible job. And in this one, we mixed all of our essence a little, you know, of Texas with, um, you know, Eric Monterrey. Monterrey from Gabriel and a little <laughs> Colombia from, from me. So it's been really nice to be able to work without any borders, anything like that. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, uh, well, I, I've been in the Tejano industry for a very long time. I started it with uh, La Mafia, actually. Yeah. Uh, but I came in with uh, Henry Gonzalez, which was the manager for La Mafia. And then they had this situation and they separated and they formed a company called OPD. For those guys who are all, you know, uh, and uh, they asked me to produce, uh, the very first artist I ever produced was Elida, from yeah. Elida Levante. Uh, I produced a song called Atrevete for all of you guys who like Elida. I love Elida. She's an amazing voice, amazing artist. Uh, and I, I was lucky enough to produce that record. And then time passes, and then I start working a little bit with Juan P. Moreno, and then I got an opportunity to work uh, with Pama. So I got really, really involved in the kind of music. But I was a little bit of a nutcase, you know. I <laughs> I always like to do weird stuff. So yeah. I don't know. I, at one point, I kind of felt that um, you know I, I don't know if, like every anybody was ready for the weird stuff that I wanted to do. So I actually got into reggaeton of all things. Uh, when Adasa and me uh, got together, I actually got her signed to Universal doing reggaeton. So she started doing oh, wow. then, then that's, um, I think your first song that we did was with Ciara. Right? Ciara Miss Elliot, that a remix of One Two Step. I did, I did Baby, I want to see you do that one two step. Everybody come now and do that one two step. So it, was me, it was me, Miss Elliot, and Ciara and Adasa. I produced it. Wow. And because of that one, uh, I also, uh, we knew people. And then, so we kind of connected with people with the another song with people. It was Kama Sutra. So then those two songs got her signed to Universal and her whole career started. And I want to say I was always being very comfortable behind the scenes. I, she's yeah. the artist and I'm just the wind beneath her wings. And I just, I, uh, but I love him. I love what he does. I love the music we make together and he's an incredible musician. And so I, I was jumping up at the opportunity when he finally said yes. And I was like, well, we're going to do it. Now. We're going to do something together. We wanted to do the Hano because, you know, we met and we, we got married in Texas. We yep. met in Houston. Uh, we're very much Tejano, so even though I'm Mexican. Right. From Monterrey. Guys, yeah. So in Monterrey, you know. So a lot of you guys who come from Mexico live all your lives in the United States, you know what I'm talking about. There comes a moment that you feel both. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You know, there, there's, a, there's a saying that I always say. Uh, I heard it and I always repeat it. I said, I wasn't born in Texas, but I got here as soon as I could. 
<laughs> yeah, I I feel like you know this, I'm, this is my life, you know. So it's just like there comes a moment that they tell you, so what are you? And I'm both. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're both. You're you're like me. I'm Mexican, and I am um, Tejano too. So I, I didn't know what to do. Right now, we're living actually in Nashville. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because of my career, I I do a lot of music for Warner Chapel and stuff like that. So we got a house over here. I'm, I'm talking to. No, it's wonderful. I think I want to. But, but anyway, when I had a chance and I thought, you know what, if we want to do something together, I like to do cumbias. It's always been my favorite. And mine too. I mean, mis raíces son colombianas. That's why I got cast in La cumbia viene de Colombia. So yeah. then we mix those flavors. And I yes. think the way that he did it. If you hear it, you're going to hear it. It's, it's, it's unique in, in this I, approach. You know? I'm going to play one of those videos because uh, Nemo probably doesn't know a lot of your music. So I like to introduce uh, some artists to Nemo. So Yeah. Can, like that. I'm Joe Public. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, so you're now Eric is from Houston, right? Or yeah. Okay. Did you live yeah. in Houston also? He's still living in. Houston. Yeah, we we did live in Houston. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. That's, that's, that's where we, I, we started, like my career, um, in the clubs in Texas. Like we would be in back in the day, like. Pushing CDs and trying to get them. We did hip hop yeah, in those like days. Music. We started it there. In I was Tejano. I was still doing Tejano, but that's I was a hip hop artist. She's a really yeah, good we rapper. lived on Westheimer. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! I used to live off of Westheimer. Oh, yeah. I used to. Uh, yeah. Uh, Just a uh, few uh, blocks from the mall. Yeah. Oh yeah, from the gallery. Yeah. Okay. What was the big club over there? Was it Hullabaloo? Was that the big club back in yeah. there? Hullabaloo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, we ha we had uh, La Fiebre, a couple of members of La Fiebre here a, a couple months ago, and uh, and uh, when I saw the interview with that Eric was asked, oh cool. We did have the trump the current trumpet player there, but uh, Eric was one of the first trumpet players with them. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. He's the one who got you know he has all this flip. Yeah. The trumpet. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. did he? He's, teach he's an amazing performer. He yeah. really really. Did he did the the two of them uh, learn how to do all that? It is my un, it is my understanding that Eric is the one who came up with that because he, he used started. To do that in you know, do all the flipping and all the things. Right. He was yeah. Mr. Muscles, you know. He still is Mr. <laughs> Muscles, you know. Yeah. You know, he's just a really attractive dude. I met him while I, I was producing Fama actually. Okay. I was oh. producing the album from Quiero Volverte a Ver, and he came to do some recording for La Fiebre. Yeah. And we just hit it off. We became really really good friends and. He decided at one point leave the fiebre and we actually made a band together. But like we were oh. crazy. That's why it's called Los Locos, by the way. Because everybody <laughs> thought we were like just nuts. You know? <laughs> the ideas that we had were really weird. If anybody ever heard the record that I came up with at those days in EMI, that was a really weird record because I didn't care about the rules. And yeah. I did Norteño, but I did harmonies that were only exclusive to, you know, like jazz or to pop or things like that. And I didn't care. And it was with accordion and everything, but doing that. But we were crazy, so then that's when the name had to come up. It was Adasa and Los Locos. Actually, Adasa wanted just to be called Los Locos. In the yeah, movie. I did. I just wanted Los Locos, but they were like, oh, no, we should do Adasa and Los Locos. I was like, yeah. all right. Well, we need a pretty know, face. I feel like, you know, ah. we're the band. <laughs> uh, they need a pretty face, because ah. ellos son muy feo. <laughs> bueno, yo, el Elix es bastante <laughs> lindo. <laughs> Nah, pero con este me casé, así que... Oh, there you go. <laughs> Algo de tener, no sé qué será. Hey, we got seven kids. Yeah. I think seven so. kids? I was shocked when I heard yeah, that. Yeah, seven, seven kids? kids. Yes. yes. That wow. was one of the questions Olivia wanted to ask. I said, how do you deal with seven kids? I said, do you remember Olivia, all the... don't ask that question. Do you remember all their names? I do most one, days. Two, <laughs> Pepe, Paco, Pancho, Pedro, and Pablo. Yes. Five and four here right now. No, we, know. we do, but five you know, still live with us. Yeah, five still are, are home with us. Two of them already flew in us. So, yeah, oh, we still awesome. have five photos at home. I just want to send some quick shout outs. I got TDK over here. Oh, Say yeah. hello. We got Four Muscle as well. And uh, Steph and Jeff. Hello. And I'll Albert, Albert Miranda. Albert Miranda. Yeah. Hello. We, we, Usually we answer questions from the the uh, chat in the last fifteen minutes. Well, we're an hour show, so so yeah, you kind of ruined it. Thank you very much. <laughs> shout out. These guys know our format and no, stuff like they, that. They know so we're all they, over the place. They actually like to talk amongst themselves. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm seeing here El Dorado Ranch, Olympus Disco, and these people. Oh, yeah, back in back in the day, El Dorado Ranch. <laughs> yeah. right there. Oh yeah, but you guys have a big uh, pedigree. I mean. Eric does you and Adasa that you both uh uh yeah okay I know you're not 
you're not you don't have big plans to to uh, like uh, to travel or perform at like nightclubs and stuff. But I was thinking that are, are, do you have plans to go to the uh, the Hunter Music Awards this year? Oh, it's wow. November twenty second. November twenty second. Okay, yeah, that's crazy. Right. It's a little bit I guess weird in the aspect that Eric gigs every weekend. Yeah, Alasa is on tour almost. Uh, two or three times every single month is in, in some performance just came back from China and stuff like that wow. and I'm usually their musical director so we all independently perform a whole lot but we wanted to do this thing and what we're going to do is put the music out there yeah. and then if there's yeah. a demand for it then we are going to perform yeah. right. if there's no demand then we just have fun doing it and put it out there and, and see who likes it it puts us in a very cool position because we don't have to be nice what I mean <laughs> with that true. is you know, you know how when you're trying to make it and then yeah. you just try to be nice as far as like, I'm going to do something that people may or may not like. Right. So our attitude is we're going to do something that we like, express what we need to express, and then somebody like it good. And if they don't, well, yeah. it'll be sad. But that's just kind of like the attitude we're taking over here. For a long time in my career, especially, I, yeah. you know, I got to pay the bills. So I was like, oh, yeah. what do I have to play? Lo que quieran, you know? And yeah. I would do exactly as I was asked. But in this case, this band's purpose is for us to, you know, be ourselves and then put it out there and then... If people like people it, think. great. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the Tahana Music Awards would probably be a good introduction and reintroduction to... It's no, November. No. It's a Friday the 22nd. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be there. Uh, I know right. Lawrence is going to be there. Where is it taking there. place? Where it's in San Antonio at the... Uh, is it the Boeing Center or... Nemo, do you know? I actually you know? won the Tejano Music Awards producer of the year one year. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You got BMI yes. on there. Right? I actually, yeah. I, okay. Okay. So yeah, it would be interesting to go. I, I, I even hit one of those medals somewhere. Yeah, the here. BMI over there. Yeah. Yeah, the BMI yeah, the, songwriter. It's like in my couch? table. Of, and this was like the I won the BMI songwriter that year yeah. for, for Texas, and then I was in the I tied with Amy Quintanilla for okay. the producer of the year of yeah. that particular year. Yeah. Wow, that's badass. Yeah. I, I uh, introduced my daughter to uh, Selena's dad uh, this past summer uh, like that. Uh, I was shocked that he was at the museum. I, w I wanted to show her because uh, she she listens. To, well, the only one she knows is Selena because she doesn't speak Spanish. My Spanish kind of sucks, too. But it was my first language. But uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great dude. I actually worked for him for a while. Uh, I will say that he was my first mentor. Oh, cool. Okay, so be, before AV, I just basically did whatever I wanted and, you know, did all these weird things with electronics and cumbias and whatever. And I, I had no, like, focus. It was just, like, just whatever I want to do, a mess, man. Uh, when I started working with him, he was the first one to kind of, like, or kind of like focus me and tell me some of his uh, ideas of how he produced and stuff like that. Honestly, great guy. Love to see him oh, yeah. again. Uh, Alas also uh, met him. We were we were both with him for a few months before we moved to Mexico. Yeah, yeah absolutely great guy. Okay, uh, I think you're the only one that ever said that about him. No, <laughs> because we don't know him. I'm just kidding. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, him, it's, you know it's him personally, it's, you know that AB is all hard. And yeah. the thing with AB is because he's all hard, you can hurt him. You know what I'm saying? Because he really is feels passionately about everything. And uh, I, I have read some of the stuff because I follow him, seeing just see how he's doing. And the, and the reality is that life can kick you in the butt, man. It just oh, can. Yeah. And if you're a person who's very close to your feelings and everything, well, your feelings get hurt and stuff. So honestly, I, I love the man and I really appreciate uh, who he was for me as a mentor. And hopefully I'll get to see him some other yeah. time. Now, you're, you're talking about A.B. the son or the... A.B. Oh, AB the son. The son. The son. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay. See, okay. and I was talking about the dad. Don't yeah. get into that one. Okay. See, so you're okay. So we're in agreement. <laughs> All right. You well, can, can be I, quite scary sometimes. Let me tell you. I I know him also, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's just say let's move on from this. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> okay. You gotta, give, you gotta yeah. give us a good story. Yeah. I I don't yeah, think so. I don't think you're gonna have a problem uh, about the Tejanos uh, loving your music because. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy. I saw your three music videos that uh, that you have, and I enjoyed all of them. I even saw the one, the Christmas song with Hilda, and, and I enjoyed that one. I love Christmas songs and stuff like that. And I said, "Wow!" When I heard it, I was going, "Wow!" I should have played this during July, you know, <laughs> Christmas in July and stuff. But yes. 
I'm going to play your video, uh, Dutracion. Uh, so you tell what it's about. Oh, yeah. it's about me. It's it is not, not about me. I'm just saying. It's not about <laughs> me. Okay. Right, he's perfect. He's this false thing to an angel that I can never have. But um, this song was about uh, actually my mom and my father because growing up, they were so in love when they started, but they had a moment where the you know trust was broken, and my father you know oh. sprayed. And so I, to me, this song was like what I wish my mom would have said. Now, mind you, after all of the years, they came back together and all that. But in that moment, when I was a kid and seeing my mom cry and seeing how hurt she would be por la traición de mi papá, you know, the betrayal that I gave you all of my heart, you know, um, I wish she would have said, me llevo todo, nunca te importe y sabrás cómo se siente cuando entregas todo y más. Me llevo el carro, el dinero, las joyas para que recuerdes. Me llevo el perro, tú quédate solo a ver quién te quiere. Qué tonta fui al quererte tanto, tanto, tanto. Pero ahora tú vas a sufrir tanto, tanto, tanto. No hay nada peor que un corazón lleno de furia y amor. Llorarás, quiero que te duela tanto, tanto, tanto tu traición. Wow. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. Okay. That's well, the highlight, highlight of the, the show. Okay. And wait, you missed the first part, but yeah, it's a good highlight. But uh, here, I'm going to play the uh, the video. Okay. So, here we go. Vienes armado, tus palabras me pueden matar. Cabeza abajo, tu traición yo la puedo notar. Camisa blanca con pinta labios que no era mío. Rojo como el color de tus ojos al ver los míos Qué tonta fui al quererte tanto, tanto, tanto Pero ahora tú vas a sufrir tanto, tanto, tanto No hay nada peor que un corazón lleno de furia y amor Te importe y sabrás cómo se siente cuando entregas todo y más. Me llevo el carro, el dinero, las joyas para que recuerdes. Me llevo el perro, tú quédate solo a ver quién te quiere. un clavo, ahora me empujas a su lado, pero que te quede claro, no te olvidarás de esto, de mí no te has librado, que creía por ser hombre tenías el derecho, que creía que iba a perdonar lo hecho, que creía, ojo que no ven, corazón que no siente, pues estás demente, mírame a la cara, ahora me lo llevo todo, tu camisa, pantalones, ya lo quemo todo, el dinero es bueno, voy y me lo gasto todo, te doy donde te duele pa' que sufras como sufrí yo Oh, 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 ahora sufre como sufrí yo
Sweet. All right. I love the animation, man. I, that is awesome. Dice, para un, para un pe, ¿Cómo dice? Para un hombre con, con un martillo. Con un martillo. Yeah. Con un martillo. Yeah. Bravo. I, I was going to ask you. Pero que te quede claro. No te olvidarás de esto de mí. No te has librado. ¿Y qué creías? ¿Que por ser hombre tenías el derecho? ¿Qué Ay. creías? ¿Que iba a perdonar lo hecho? ¿Qué creías? Ojo oh, que, que no ven no corazón, corazón que, que no siente. Tú estás demente. Mira. No, I am one of the co-writers. Yeah, we write this stuff together. It just yeah. sounds bad on me. It sounds awesome. Y'all sound good together. Oh, yeah. It's not like a little bit of Carol G there. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, that's where I bring you know everything that I am. I mean, I started in reggaeton. My whole career was based on that. She was the original style. princess of reggaeton. I mean, we came out with the tra, and Kama Sutra, and then the one to stay in reggaeton remix. So from 2004 on, it, has, it was that career. So, but I wanted to do something that was centered on a, a kind of music that you could bring your whole family to. And that's what the music that we're doing as Adas y Los Locos is that I don't care if it's a three-year-old or your 93-year-old grandma, you can come to a show, enjoy yeah. it. And the way that we're doing the videos is designed where your people are live watching us you can also see the videos going on so when you see one of the characters go up you know oh ese va a ser. it came from the dolores yes, idea man. every time that we man. tour I'm, I'm usually the band director in the back you know and i have the whole band and they usually project dolores in the top so dolores will be thinking we don't talk about bruno or whatever song and we're playing over here that's a singing and everybody's always looking at the cartoon yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and we just like why don't we just make our own cartoons because by the way all of those visuals were designed by us yeah. Oh, that's bad. Oh, I like him. The whole video, the whole thing was designed by her. So then, basically, we create our own character. So when they see that character come up, they're going to know, oh, that yeah, song. Yeah. Every single song will have a different character. They all have certain things about her or about us, you know, like the hat, or they have her with the curly hair. You Except know. for Costeñita Americana. When I was at a Comic-Con, because um, I sign autographs, you know, for Dolores and stuff. And sometimes they fly me to different places all over the world to do that. These girls came up to me and they were like, oh, my goodness, I would love for you to see the, the Dolores that I drew. And they showed it to me. And then I was like, super this good. is so good. And it was like the 17 year old girl. They were young, sister, young. Two, two sisters. And I was like, do you have something else you can show me? Have you ever done animation? And they showed me a little bit of what they did. And I said, you know what? Come back tomorrow. And I gave them like a little bit of like a challenge for them to do and come back the next day and they did and we hired them on the spot and they were the wow. ones who did the video that, that video Costeñita Costeñita Americana. Americana. oh wow that's it's cool. kind of a biographical thing because she's from la costa de, de colombia that's why costeñita but she's an american but so she's una, ella es una costeñita americana and yeah. that, that was the concept behind that song well, I have that queued up. If we have time, I, I will play that. All right, yeah. I don't think you're going to have a problem with the tunnels loving that. Because, you know, we're all eclectic. We like all types of music. And I like the mix that you put in, in those cumbias that you have. It's a, I, I, see, I see all the flavors that, that interest you all in those songs. Like there's a little bit of reggaeton and like that. Like, I like salsa and merengue also. And, uh, I, yeah. I, I used to teach salsa lessons at my college. Like All that. right. We're going to hear some of the new stuff that is coming now. Some of it's English, like completely English. Yeah, we have the English. Cumbia, cumbia. 100 yes. English cumbias, but they're very, um, the influences uh, I use musically in it are like really Colombian pop with Mexican Norteño cumbia. It's just a weird thing. That's what, <laughs> yeah. I, was, that's, that's what I was saying, that when I did the Tejano thing the first time, I always felt I had to please, you know? And this time, I don't care. So yeah. then... The stuff is going to come out and the people going to tell them, man, this stinks. Or it's going to say, well, it's pretty good. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be the truth. It's good. It's new. I, yeah. I mean, that's what we need, some kind of revamp. Yeah, so that, good for you. I think having the freedom to do what you want is going to be awesome like that. Yeah. Nothing but love it inside all that. But uh, you also did Christian music too, right? Didn't yeah, you? so there's two parts of me, you know. Tengo la costeñita y tengo la americana. So what we decided to do is – uh, that's how the one that I've, you know, I've been for all of these years. We kept it in everything we've done because I've really enjoyed different genres of music. So, yes, I am in reggaeton, but then I've also, when I got um, the part for Encanto, be right before then, I was extremely, extremely sick. Like literally the day after I had my audition. 
And so I got to the brink of being paralyzed. Yeah, I I had the second wave of COVID hit me and I got paralyzed from the neck down. And so one of the things that I I promised was like, if I were able to be saved, it was that I was just going to, I was just going to show my gratefulness and I wasn't going to hide in the Christian closet anymore. I think sometimes we get very intimidated in just acknowledging God in our lives and just saying, yeah, Jesus changed my life. And I, and I am a believer because you're so uh, careful about getting sanctioned or blocked or blackballed in the industry or canceled exactly for your beliefs. And the truth is that now we live in a day and age where every single person has the right and the ability to profess what they think and they should not be canceled for it. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Not for your beliefs. Exactly. Not for your religious beliefs. Yes. And, and so what I what I think is I believe what I believe, you believe what you believe, and let's go out and have some uh, yeah. you know arepas and tacos. Let's do it. You know. Do it, yeah. So what we yeah. did is the first thing we did right after you know I feeling like so grateful for having these opportunities to just be alive and move my hands and feet and be able to sing again. And she was she really they it. literally sent her to die at her house. Yeah. Like she asked to be to please Let allow go. her to go die at home. I had to it sign myself bad. out and take my own responsibility and, over my own life to be able to yeah. go home because in COVID, he couldn't I be I literally the picked that up. I literally carried her in my own arms uh, out of the hospital when they told us there was nothing that could be done for her. And we went to the house, and you don't want to hear this whole story, but it's, it was pretty hard. And she got paralyzed, and she couldn't move. And many times I thought she was going to die in that moment, but she, she survived. And um, there's a big change that happens to you. You know, you can think like, oh, yeah, I can do all my own, let me tell you. When the when the door yeah. when this comes knocking, yeah, you remember. Right. You, you know, paralyzed. Yeah, yeah, you can think I don't need nobody. Let me tell you that moment that you're right there. It humbles you. Oh, yeah. Yes, then you find oh, out. Yeah, it was a very big change in our hearts and who we were and we were willing to do. So at that moment we decided, you know, we need to get out of the Christian closet because you always play with the gray. You know, you think I'm not that bad. You know, that's okay. I mean, there's worse than me. You know, you do all that stuff. And, and, and then at one point you said, no, let's just really be who we really want to be. And we did an album called In Jesus We Are One, which is actually, there's two albums. There's actually one album. Yeah. Okay. And one is called In Jesus We Are One and, and the other one is... In the, Living Water. Yes. There actually one album is just the label, only one is six songs. But we wrote 10. So what we did is we give the label the six and we put out the other four. <laughs> yeah. And EP. So yeah. it needed to be said, and I was so grateful to be able to show it. Also, is for the public that has seen my career, my trajectory from working from Snoop with Snoop and Pitbull and all these people to also listening to the side of me that is a believer, you know, because that's what makes me who I am. And I think all of us sometimes are very quick to just show only one side because I want people to like me. And so you only show one side of yourself. And to me, it's like, now I want to show all sides and you like me or you don't like me, but I love being alive. And I want you to know what makes me tick and how grateful I am to be a mom, to be a musician, to be an actress and to have all these opportunities. But I know it all comes from God. At least for me, that's how I feel. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so that's why we split the project. So I can do my, you know, faith-based music. Like right now I have a country song that is about to come out. It's called um, That's Where I'm At. So the, al- the album just dropped. The video is coming out. The video is coming out in a couple weeks. And so that showcases my side of being here in Nashville and just being a mom and the craziness that it is. It's the American side and the Americana. Yeah. It's, all, it's like a country, kind of folky country fan. There's always an element of hip hopness to her that's because who I that's am. what she is. Oh, yeah. But it's more for country folk. And then a base los locos is our Latino. Our Latino side. side. Even though I am singing sometimes in English, fully English, right. it's always Latin influence with Tejano, Cumbia, Vallenato. Tu sabes, desde México, Cumbia, desde de México y Cumbia, también Colombiana. Always mixed together. So, real quick, back to your being paralyzed. How, how did that happen, and and what was the remedy for that? Uh, I, I know the remedy. Okay. It was a little phone well, call from Disney that kind of <laughs> motivated well, you. Thank uh, God. Well, well. Thank yeah, God. So basically, after she did the the audition that you video and you sent, yeah. uh, and we didn't get any response, and I told us, I don't know, I think you got it, and and I don't know what they haven't called, and I thought I'm gonna call them. They put the phone there, let me call them. And yeah. She's like, no, no, this is not bother. Because that's side, like you don't want to bother anybody. Yeah, sometimes you I, have to. I like to bother people. Yeah, so yeah. Then, yeah, I'm gonna bother them. So I wrote to them. Turns out that my email have gone to their junk and yeah, the spam folder. Anyway, so she they say, okay, you're gonna have the audition with Manuel Miranda. So and like and the actually directors. it was with um it was with the directors that time it was with yeah, it was. Uh, Jamie, Jamie Sparrow Roberts and I was Howard. with yeah 
Byron, uh, Byron, Howard. Byron Howard, Jared Bush, Yvette Merino was there. And that was my callback. She had to do a rap song. Callback. So that, that's when I a did from Hamilton. So, 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 so this is what it feels like to match with, with someone at your level. What the hell is a catch? It's the feeling of freedom of seeing the light. It's been fractal with a key and a kite. You see it, right? From um, Alexander Hamilton. And so I did like a mashup and we... We did the the presentation. I also talked about my family and telling them about, you know, the humble beginnings of my family. And I'm so grateful for everything they did being a first generation Latina here. You know, you come here to the United States and you really come into a land that offers you opportunities and freedoms that you don't otherwise have. And I'm just so grateful that my kids will never have to experience that. They have to tackle other issues, but they at least get that advantage that my parents. Well, gave next to day me. she told me I'm feeling dizzy. I'm feeling. And I'm going, I thought oh, I was pregnant. Oh, I thought I was oh, pregnant. Oh, oh. <laughs> what are we gonna do with my? I like we have an Escalade, one of the big ones, uh, and I just thought, no, we're not gonna fit there anymore. Uh, <laughs> it only fits seven people. We like you know five plus five children plus uh, school. Yeah. So she went to the hospital. And when she was in the hospital, she called me just minutes after and she couldn't speak anymore. It was literally within 30 minutes. And so yeah. what happened is they ran CTs, MRIs, blood work, and they couldn't find what it was. Then um, I signed myself out. Gabriel came. He literally car carried me into the car. We left the other vehicle there. And then we have a friend that is a paramedic. And we went to Vanderbilt um, here in Nashville. And after 14 hours of being there, they ran more tests, more scans than the neurologist told me. You know, there's so many unknowns with COVID. We've seen a lot of this and we do not know when or if your symptoms will subside. And what would happen is I would just suddenly become paralyzed, just neck down, just nothing. And and then I my, I would just sit there, and just like move my eyes, just barely my eyes and I could barely speak. And then it would leave for a few minutes. But it, then if it, I tried, it looked a lot like a stroke, but it wasn't. Yeah. Okay. So if I tried to walk and talk at the same time, I would pass out. Like I could not do two things. So. If I wanted to speak, I had to be very, very quiet and very, very light. So when it came day after day after day, and we were just like, I would just pray that the next morning I would wake up. And I literally wrote my will. Um, and we didn't know if or when they would pass. So we would try different things. Like we would pray. I would fast. We were like, let's see if by eating this or not eating that or trying this and that. And we started finding things that would work a little bit more and a little bit more. And as the days progressed, I was feeling a little bit better to where... I could mumble can some mumble, words mumble. and I can mum I can walk a little. She was in my she she had her hair in my legs and I was just playing with her hair. I ain't gonna lie to you. I just if she was gonna die, I want her to die, die peacefully. Yeah. I hope you never have to spend something like this, dude, because the love right. of your life next to you and all your selfishness, all your selfishness goes away and you just oh, yeah. want to have peace, even right. if that's a lot of yeah. And as, as we were right there, then I get a call. And it's Jamie, which is the casting director. Oh, says, oh, congratulations, you got the movie. Oh, yeah, right. That's, the motiva no. that's good motivation. That's good because, by the way, from the very beginning of her relationship, she told me she wanted to sing for Disney. That was my dream. And I was like, kid. nah, let me take it to Universal. And we did everything else except Disney. And she already thought that the Disney thing was never going to happen. So yeah. I'm like, ah. Uh, and I, told, I was like, just like, what is it? And I said, it was Disney. You got the movie. And, and then I said, and I like muted just one second. And I said, baby, I don't think you should take it. I, I don't want you to exert yourself any more than you should and all that kind of stuff. And, and I said, call him if I <laughs> That's exactly it. This. Yeah. That was exactly it. So I said, well, you better put your strings together because when I'm done talking, you're going to have to speak. Yeah. And she's like, oh. so she was like breathing all that stuff. And I negotiated the whole contracts and all that stuff. And when I was done negotiating, she goes, she goes, Can I speak to Alasa? And I was thinking, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> We are going to find out very soon. So I'm just going to give her the phone. And I said, thank you so much. When do I start? Like that. That was, that was all I could say. And I literally almost like passed out. And then I grabbed it. I I, I probably look like an overbearing husband. <laughs> the phone and then just go, all right, so let's finish out the deal and let's get going. And I asked the question, you know, how many months before she starts recording? And then we Do we have to fly to LA? And They were like, no, because of COVID restrictions, you could do it from your studios. And so we recorded from our studio at home. So when you see the film in the credits, it says, you know, Tennessee. And it says, Don Candiani Productions, because it's our studio. Yeah, and that song was, I, all her parts were recorded in our studio. And by the way, right after the movie came out, we came out with the first song with CHR. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you've heard the two cumbias that we came out with in, in uh, their CHR. Yes, 
Ni un beso. So we've been trying to do this for a long time. We come up with two songs, which was Ni un beso and uh, Mi de Bolsito. No. Flor de Lis. So we come up with two cumbias, but then uh, Dolores took over our life. It was just like tour and tour and tour and tour. And oh, yeah. it became very difficult. And we have rules. Uh, only two weekends we go out because the other weekends we spend it with our children. No matter hey, what. Damn, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter how much they offer, whatever, we don't take it. Yeah. Because, you know, family is first. That's true. So that's amazing. I mean, that if that wasn't God sent, I don't know what it is. You know, was that, that got you going and... Motivation. And yeah, yeah, that is unbelievable. God bless but, you. Let me, let me ask you two things about that. How, what was the, how long was the period of the COVID where you were paralyzed and all that? Did, was it over two weeks, two months? It lasted... It lasted well, what do you think? Well, okay, so when, once the doctors say there's nothing we can do for you, yeah, right. then you are as you and God. That's honestly that's what you got. I we prayed a lot and we came to the conclusion of following natural medicine. And what we did is we started with three days of full fasting, just completely okay. nothing, no water, no yeah, yeah out of your system. but from let's say from the phone call that we got after we started going through all that process, the phone call, I, I needed to be ready in three weeks. Oh, and that wow. was really difficult because we were starting to record in three weeks. Like literally three weeks later, I was so, with Jared Bush. We did that, and then right after that, we did like garlic with honey. I don't know who. Yeah. I am not telling you this is a solution. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, no, it worked. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. You got it. You got to try. The first three days, uh, three weeks, I put a yeah, bunch of weeks. this. No, no, for the first three days. Well, the first three days. The first three days yeah. when she was fasting, I took yeah. garlic and I put it in honey and I fermented it there while she was fasting. When she was done fasting and everything in her was starving, then she had to eat just the garlic with the honey, and she like throw out gook and it was, it was just really awful. something. <laughs> okay. But it, it, within three weeks, she was able to talk. Then we had the negotiations that she had uh, talked to Lee Manuel Miranda all the stuff, and then, I think it was three months altogether. About three months. That, that for her to be functional. Okay. And uh, when she recorded, that's why you, when you hear Dolores, she's very very soft spoken. Yeah. That's what she had. It's, well, it turned it, out that, well. That was her voice. That's that's it. That's that's she amazing. Like, she, she could not get exhorted because she's. But I was I able to do it, and that was the biggest thing. Now she we did tell Jamie I did. after I like was better, and after I had gotten cast, I I did tell Jamie I was like, I just want you to know, this is what happened, and this is where my health is, and they were so understanding and so loving and kind. And honestly, the the moment that I thought I was not going to be there for was the purple carpet at the premiere because. Finally, we were going to be together as a cast and they wanted to take La Familia Madrigal picture. But I mean, I wasn't in a state necessarily of being like 100 percent around people. <laughs> and we said, you know, we're not really sure if I can go through everything. But uh, they were so great, gracious. They kept she made it through. She was strong. Oh, my gosh. They took such good care of me and I was able to walk that carpet. And so when you see me in that picture, I feel like I'm like one of those like prom queen winners. <gasps> <laughs> I, was just, I was so happy I was there with everybody and I got to have Honestly, I was right behind her. You can even see I'm walking behind. I was just thinking if she faints, I need to just jump and get her. Yeah. It uh, was like that. But I was so grateful yeah. to be able that to That is amazing. That's an awesome She's just story. really, really that tough. Is, She's really <laughs> tough. That, that is a badass story. Babies, and she couldn't have, uh, because uh, her body doesn't take medicine very good, they could give an injection. She had the babies like all style. <laughs> so this is a right. tough woman. She yeah, is yeah. so this is tough and I really admire that from her. She's and, I, very and, strong. and I'm sure she has patience because you homeschooled your kids. We homeschool them still. Yeah. Wow. That that's yeah. I that homeschooled my daughter during COVID and she was in oh. kinder. And I'm a teacher. I'm a professional teacher. <laughs> I got a, a bachelor's and a master's in curriculum instruction. That was the toughest thing ever. To get, uh, it is. Get it is very tough, and that's yeah. why I don't do it, Chida. <laughs> Especially when you do their homework and you, they get it wrong. <laughs> that's, that's a horrible part. My you daughter, you get it wrong. Yeah. Say, well, what do you mean it's wrong? No, yeah. my daughter's worst grade is math, and I'm a math teacher. <laughs> no, come on, buddy. I don't do her homework. I try to teach her, and if she makes mistakes. She makes mistakes. That's it. <laughs> okay, but I had two questions because Nemo and everybody else knows. It eventually, all comes around to be uh, the buddy show because I talk about myself a lot. The second question for COVID because during COVID, I had I had COVID. I lost all my taste buds and smell. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Did you have the same effect? Oh, yeah. That was the first one. First first oh, time we got hit with it, the smell and the taste was, whoop, that was done. Yeah, the lawn, her, and all that stuff. Yeah. That happened. See, the weird thing is, you know, I'm obviously older than her. I supposed to be the one in danger. Dude, I was done in like two days. Like, yeah, he was like, oh, I, I had it in bed. I had nothing. Like, nothing happened. And she, on the other hand, she was having lawn problems and all kinds of stuff. It yeah. really hit her a lot harder than it hit me. To me, it was like a cold. Yeah. But to her, it was like a yeah, it was a huge headache, headache and you know the the taste and all that stuff. Yeah. For her, he didn't know she couldn't like breathe. We had a sauna in our house. We had yeah. to go to that sauna all the time to try Every to day. breathe. Uh, yeah, my brother's a doctor, and like after the fifth day, because you know we got it like during Thanksgiving, uh, my whole family did, and uh, I I said, oh, I think I'm getting better. The fifth day, I said, dude, that's when it gets tough. I go, no, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> now I'm worried more because he told me that. It was horrible, but I didn't have my taste buds back for like six, six, seven months afterwards. Wow. Everything tastes like dirt or smoke in it. And I lost a lot of weight. And I do believe in fasting because I eat four days a week. I fast. I just have one meal a day. And the past three years, I think. I've why, had... why is that important right now? Because it's all about buddy, you know. Okay, that, yeah. that. <laughs> they, they, they talked about fasting. So let's, I, let's, let's go to yeah. chat. Let's go to I, chat. Fast. Okay, well, let's go to chat. Okay. All right. Let's see who, what we got here. Oh, wow. We got a lot. Okay. Uh, uh, Steph and Jeff, it's a hello to – it's Stephanie Martinez. Hey, Ste okay. Stephanie's been on the show a couple times. Uh, Albert, hey, Albert. I'm in San Antonio. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> see, sometimes they talk about each other. You know what? I can't do that. Let's say, Oh, hey, Luis. He, he's a, a longtime listener. So, hi, Olivia had a great part – Olivia, glad you were a great partner. Yeah, she took over your spot, Nemo. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, my, my You're daughter. welcome. You're welcome. Oh, she's welcome to. <laughs> she was awesome. You know what? Yeah. If you ever leave, yeah, I know who she to is welcome to do it by all means. <laughs> all right, I'm super proud of your daughter. Thank you, Luis. There okay. you go. We just she got a new star here. El Dorado. Okay. El Dorado Ranch in Houston. Yeah. Okay. Olympus, Olympus is going Houston nightclubs. Oh, mm. uh, hello, Ricky. Uh, in the voice of uh, reason, uh, reason <laughs> yeah. my nick my nickname is ricky because uh, he looks in, like ricky martin yeah back in college okay, they, yeah. They yeah. thought i looked like yeah. ricky martin back in the day i think gabriel looks more like ricky martin than you <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah tdk loves to bring that up all the time thanks for the shout out um no. <laughs> watch see that's why we don't go for early on the show because yeah. then they just log off no and he's stuck around the whole time <laughs> no se fue nada. <laughs> okay i don't know if you know anything about tdk tdk has been in music videos he's a pretty good dancer and, right. and uh, he dances with a lot of the the artists around so so be careful when he might grab you Ooh. on the dance floor. Yeah. Imagine studio. Yeah, imagine studio. Yeah, that's uh, Lawrence. That's Lawrence or so. Hey, Cuba fellas, Adasa y Los Locos are awesome. Loved having you on the show, and their song is killing it. Awesome. Thank you, Cuba. Right. Alfredo. It's a hey, Lawrence. Okay. Alfredo's from Conroe. They're from Conroe. Yeah. Conroe, I lived yeah. in Conroe, Texas with my yeah. family, man. I did. You went to high school or something. Yeah, Conroe High School. Yeah. I used to teach in Conroe. No, well, really? Con Conroe ISD. Uh, the Woodlands. I was yep. a teacher there. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I went to go visit a few friends in Conroe. Is that where the penitentiary is at? Well, I think it's north of that, right? Oh, okay. Ooh. Penitentiary. Okay. This, it was Era Broma. Okay. So, Luis, <laughs> Gabriel, I can't. How do I get a cartoon character? <laughs> my avatar doesn't uh, do me justice. <laughs> did you, did you, do, that was all done by AI? Um, the one for, there's two of them that we did that were like more AI. Yeah. Wow. But you know, it's not like what people think. No. It's, it's not like, oh, it's make me a everything. video and no. it does it. No. no, no, no. You really have to know how to prompt it, then know how to. And it's very difficult to get the same face twice as yeah, like, next to Yeah, it's still, more. it's still. So but can't you do it on your iPhone too? Can't you do that on your iPhone? Yes, they're limited on how many seconds you could do. The main oh, thing okay. is have a vision and, and how you bring it to life. So I know what I want. And then I, even if it took me eight or nine softwares, I knew what to get seconds from here, seconds from there, and then what to do yeah, with Yeah, it cannot that. be done with one software. No, no. Okay. No, not that long. 
And I like this one. Adasa, for being first generation American, I'm very impressed. Your English and your Spanish are perfect. But I wonder what happened to Buddy. <laughs> TDK, uh, you know, you know what? I'm yeah, gonna get to that. Everybody wants to hear your "I'm getting skinny" story. Uh, <laughs> I want to hear your "I'm getting skinny" story. Come on! I, I was gonna try your taco diet. Uh-huh. What well, you said? Uh, hey, yes, that stuff works. The tacos work. Yeah. That tacos work. You just works. gotta stick to. Tacos. I just haven't done it. I haven't done it. And you can't have aguas tampoco. No le metas una agua limón, no. una de Jamaica. Okay, it. it's, uh-huh. this is my, the taco diet. Is this for all of you who wanna? Who are Mexican, real Mexicans, you can't eat without tortillas. It's impossible. Yeah. So yeah. no matter yeah. how much I try, I could never lose weight because I couldn't let go of the tortillas. I just yeah. couldn't. Yeah. So you what said, I say, I'm going to invent this taco diet. In, uh-huh. You said two ta- uh, two corn tortillas or one flour a day. Exactly. Yes. So in the morning, you get two corn tortillas, and then you put a smash, whatever. Okay. Salsa, okay. I don't care what it is. But it's got to be protein-based. You know, a lot of egg with salchicha, chicharron, chorizo. I don't care. You just, you just made two really nice, huge tacos. Okay. Just because the tortilla is there, you feel satisfied. If you don't, let's just say you just eat the huevos con chorizo, te los acabas, and you say, mm, whatever. <laughs> when am I going to start eating? I don't know. As a Mexican, that's what happens. Yeah, that's so, that is true. So in the morning, you have your two tacos with just whatever it is that you like, okay? Cheese. You can put cheese. You can put eggs. Whatever. Two. Big. And in the middle of the day, you get a steak, mm. the biggest steak that you can. You cut it, and again, you put it into two tacos with salsa verde because the green salsa has less carbs. Okay. Let me tell you, I was dropping uh, about three to four pounds a week. Wow. And I was wow. Tacos. And that sounds good. Because at one point, I want to eat more stuff, and she's a really good cook. <laughs> Yeah. So everything you see is all her fault. It's <laughs> when you go, Gabriel, you're getting a big panza. It's all her fault. She made it. She's gonna have to love it. <laughs> and she does. And she does with seven kids. Yeah, she loves my panza. There might be. I think it's wonderful. That's, that's the magic. It's my deal. This panza. The more panza, the bigger the panza, the better the chanza. <laughs> I, I've oh, lost yeah. about 40 pounds since COVID, so wow. I plateaued a little bit, so I'm going to try that taco diet. Oh. It worked. Yeah, it. Give it three it days and, and weigh yourself. Just you don't see. eat any candies, cookies. No. Not I'm not candy. dessert you, candy. You do this and you add a lemonade. You get, you get so with. just water, maybe a little bit of lemon in the water, yeah. but no Because aspects. the four tortillas is as many carbs no, you should have to have that day. But you know, yeah, if you add any carbs to that, you, what, you what's it. hard is because I cook for my daughter, and so if she doesn't eat that's it, that's the problem. That's why I, I, that's, I hate that's throwaway problem. food. I always cooked for my kids, and I'm pretty good. But now we food. switched <laughs> it because I'm the one that focuses. I go in the kitchen, I cook, and no tiene que estar like qué estás haciendo. Yeah. So I just stay away from the kitchen because I'm a weak man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's our weakness. I'm done. That's I, would play, I play whatever I can. I say, you know, just, we're just having a conversation. Okay. <laughs> I like to enjoy our food while we talk. I don't care what it is. I just want something. Okay. Anyway, we completely left the music <laughs> discussion. That, that's, no, that's, that's the way it is. It's the hot talk. Uh, uh, yeah. Alisa Barbosa, uh, Adasa, I love you from Idaho. Yeah. I love you. I love Idaho. Idaho is beautiful. I've been there. Hey, for Big Vic time. Medina. <laughs> Nobody cares about Car Rock. So Vic, <laughs> Vic, 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 Vic is a local here DJ. The, yeah. Yeah, here, yeah. yeah. Have he you ever heard of Punch Right here. Yeah. Look at Alfredo Rios from Huntsville. Huntsville. Ah. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. But Vic's a big deal, okay? <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah, he's <laughs> y'all, y'all, just, uh, y'all just skipping over him. He's, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he does a show with... Have you ever heard of Pancho Bisolas? Oh. No. So, so hey. Pancho Bisolas is, uh, is uh, DJ okay, been around, yeah. around here for the, for the longest time in the DFW, or maybe 20, 25 years. Maybe oh, yeah. you can invite us. You know what? I will send... Uh, I'll, you, I'll send your contact information to Big Vic, and then uh, uh, Pancho will have you on the show. Yeah, but uh, Vic Mart's, a big, show. Mart's a big deal too. Is it? Yeah, is, is a buddy show portion of the show for you? Oh. <laughs> okay, um, he's not a big deal well, anymore. Let's hear your Spanish from TDK and show us some fancy moves. What you're waiting? TDK, buddy. Buddy, 
Nah, nah, nah. nah. You're, you're, you're <laughs> lagging behind. Okay, Mart says, I love you, buddy. Hope to, that uh, Adasa y Los Locos is performing somewhere in the DFW in the future. Any plans over here what? anywhere? I would love it. We're, we're just, you know, we're putting our music out there. And people want to see us live and want to... Yeah. You know, request it. Yeah. We yes, don't. We don't. It. Honestly, exactly. yes, exactly. We wanna expose it, and if there is a demand, if people want to hear, then we would love to play. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we are professional players. We can do it. It's just a matter of, I don't know, does people connect with what we're doing? Maybe we should play another song so people can listen to yeah. what we're doing. Let's do it. Yeah. You know what? After this, we'll close the song uh, with. Uh, oh, we're already finishing. The time is yeah, over. Yeah. So we're yeah. wrapping it up. I know you. Nemo is got a bedtime, even though he showed up late today. It's a fine. We're we only have a couple more, and let's see what else. I said, that's why he says the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Yes, that's true. All right. <laughs> well, we well, like it to start right here. <laughs> yeah. and we keep going on the way <laughs> We love. I loved having you here, and I know my daughter loved to seeing you and oh. and uh, si singing for you and seeing you and. Uh, uh, is there? How does someone get a hold of your music? And are you on Spotify? And all we are areas? on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, Facebook, Facebook as well. Adasa y los Locos with a Z. Um, okay. So you can go ahead and check us out. So los Locos on Facebook as well. Adasa y los Locos. So we are on TikTok, Spotify, Apple Music, um, Instagram. Just you know, let us know what you think. Follow us on all the social media. No, and Alasa really does answer. Because, you know, most people, honestly, Alasa is the star. I, I know. I'm, I'm, trust me. She's the star. So, and and uh, when she goes to Facebook and everything, she's the one that answers the emails and, yeah. and talks to the fans and, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. it's a fun oh, thing. There, there was something I was going to say, because, uh, like I said earlier, you, you did, you dabbled in Christian music and stuff. Tejano is starting to turn that way. There's a lot of artists... Uh, you said Fama. Javier was going to do yeah, that. Turn that. Uh, what? Uh, you went Christian? What, and Fama, Grupo Fama? Javier? Fra, yeah. Well, he went Christian and then he had a DUI. Yeah. And then he got arrested. He's in jail right now. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, just because you're Christian doesn't mean you're perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're, you're, we're, you're Christian we're, because you're working on it. Let's yeah, make, yeah. make that clear. I, I think it was. Christian song this amazing angel. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Christian, I don't recognize I suck and I need to be better. And I need somebody to say. Yeah. I think he was Catholic because he was uh because we love to drink, but yeah. So. <laughs> okay. And Shelly is uh turn doing that and uh God, the the guy from uh Los Palominos. See si. oh jo Johnny, oh. right? Yeah, Johnny's uh, d uh d he went full force. Uh, he, yeah, he left Palominos and went on yeah. by himself. Like that. So wow. that's another aspect. You, know what, you don't need to leave one for the other. That's the way no, we no, no, no. like to communicate. Like right. we still doing our Christian music. Yes. Like in here, whenever you go to Adasa alone, you're gonna find a lot of Christian stuff and, and whatever. And for us who are the from two worlds, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Adasa has her world as, as Adasa, and then we have Adasa Los Locos. So a lot of the Tejanos kind of we have that situation. Where we love American music, we love everything in English, like some of our country or whatever. But we also like to say this, you know, bailar un merengue, bailar una salsa, una cumbia, una rancherita. Nada más rico que bailar una, una rancherita apretada, no hay nada mejor. Entonces, you know what I'm saying? I mean, come on. When you're dancing acá on the side. So we just That's make sure our lyrics are always representative of our state of yes. mind, of our heart, and, clean. and of what yeah. the message that we want to give. So if it's fun or if it has some drama to it, you know, ya nos van a entrar los babies. I can hear them in the house. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's their it's bedtime too. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, well, I'd like to thank you for being on. Yeah, thank you both. That. And oh, you, thank you for having us. And I think it would be a good idea to go to the Town Music Awards. And there's a new awards, uh, Puda Vida. It's in August. And uh, oh. there's there's several other and awards. You know what? It is a good idea. I, I think we should talk to Rick. And see. Yeah, we'll talk we to Rick. We just feel a little weird. We're going to be alone. You know, we're going to walk in there. Like, you know, just... Nah, we'll go with Rick. Rick and Isla. Hello. Okay. Yeah, well, you've got lots of friends. You got yeah. us. You got the yeah. friends. All right. Well, if you see us there, say hello. Yeah. <laughs> Nemo won't be there, though. Nemo yeah. doesn't like yeah. to travel. Yeah. Yeah. Nemo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, what was the next video? Okay. Well, we're going to say, we're going to end the show. Can you play a cumbion, please? Okay. Do you have cumbion? You have cumbion? I, I have what I have set up is uh, Costanita Americana. Do you cumbion? Do you cumbion? They like cumbion. Uh, let me see if I got that. Cumbion is the single that we're kind of pushing right now. That's why I say Paco Yeah, no, we got to do Cumbion. Eh, 
Uh, and this one okay. was done uh, bringing this one's in her on friend, your YouTube channel. Um, Irene PR, who is a an incredible rapper and singer from Puerto Rico. From Puerto Rico. So we unite Puerto Rico, Colombia, okay. Mexico, and Texas. Yes, we're una capirota bien hecha. Which is your favorite? What? All of them. It no, just I got to pick on one. Which one? How I'm feeling. Because each song uh, has its own unique vibe. Si ando herida a tu traición. Exactamente. Ando contenta, cumbiones. Cumbiones okay. pretty cool. Si ando patriótica, es cumbiones americanas. Patriótica. All right. Tiene un flow bien padre. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have it up here. And uh, again, All right. we're going to end the show with this. Uh, I'm your host, Oraldo, for It's Tejano Time. And I'm Nemo, with Tejano USA. And y'all are Adasa y los locos. Okay. And you're listening and watching to How to Time. Thanks again. And we're going to end it with this, uh, your music. Bye. Okay. Thanks. La noche se presenta baja la tensión. Y eso de la música de esta canción. Todo el mundo para la pista comenzó el cumbia. Cumbia. Trabajando y coleccionando chavo para el fin de semana. Vamos puesto pa'l desquite y a que no le gusta que se quite. Voy acelerada y con ganas. Como un elevador llena de adrenalina. Vamos subiendo de nivel pura dinamita. Este ritmo rompe hasta en tienda de la esquina. No es palaga, te da un sabor tan rico que te invita. La cumbia que te traigo, yo le brindo el flow. Ven, desquítate en la pista, el sazón lo pongo yo, yo, yo. Se presenta baja la atención Y eso es la música de esta canción Todo el mundo pa' la pista comenzó el cumbión Cumbia Yo quiero que esta cumbia la bailen La noche entera Yo quiero que mi cumbia la bailen La noche entera Un buzo en el bajo que revienta Hasta Cartagena Mi música suena que suena El ritmo corre por mi pena Con un flow que quema De otro sistema Me gusta bailar esta cumbia Ven y goza de la compasión Ven y mueve, mueve la cintura Al sabor del acordeón Si te gusta bailar esta cumbia Ven y goza de la compasión Ven y mueve, mueve la cintura Al sabor del acordeón con yo el sol, la noche se presenta baja la atención y eso es la música de esta canción. Todo el mundo para la pista comenzó el cumbión. Yo quiero que esta cumbia la baile. Yo quiero que mi cumbia la baile. Ya se con yo el sol, la noche se presenta baja la atención y eso es la música de esta canción. Todo el mundo para la pista comenzó el cumbión. Cumbia. Ya se escondió el sol, la noche se presenta baja la atención Y sube la música de esta canción, todo el mundo para la pista comenzó el cumbión